Some atheists try to debunk the proof on basis of providence by bringing into focus some imperfections like illnesses and earthquakes, for instance. The presence of imperfections, if indeed we do accept this description. Well, is it or isn't it? If those examples somehow do represent perfection, by what standard are you measuring them? Why would you call an illness a state of perfection, for example? I mean, it's your own example, yet you don't bother to explain why you would question the validity of saying something like, having an illness represents less than perfection. The concept of perfection is literally what the whole argument hinges on, so you can't just leave it hanging there. Does not in any way deny the perfections. As a matter of fact, it only proves that perfection does exist in the universe. Wait, what? How does imperfections prove that perfection does exist in the universe? What the atheist is likely pointing out, although you don't actually provide the context in which they're bringing it up, is that a perfect god seems to have created an imperfect universe, one that is full of suffering. And this suffering would be needless, because if your god truly was all-knowing and all-powerful, it could easily fix some of the conditions that lead to these illnesses, birth defects, and so on and so forth. For example, the nerve that runs from the brain to the larynx, which supplies motor function to the larynx, doesn't run in a straight path. Instead, it takes a detour and wraps itself around a major artery in the chest and back up to the larynx. We get used to the idea that evolution is so good at producing beautiful, elegant animals that look as though they've been designed. We forget that sometimes they're not perfect and there are imperfections. And the imperfections are very re revealing because they're exactly the kind of imperfections you'd expect from the accidents of history if there were no designer. There's a nerve called the recurrent laryngeal which runs from the brain and its end organ is the larynx and you think it would just go straight there but in a human what it does is goes down into the chest, loops around one of the main arteries in the chest and then goes straight back up again. Obviously a ridiculous detour. No engineer would ever make a mistake like that. This is an example of how we poor, flawed, stupid humans can pick out a design flaw Realize it was a product of evolution, but if given godlike powers, we could easily fix. Your god, on the other hand, with its infinite power, somehow missed this error. Okay, so before we carry on with the rest of the video, I do want to share that my Discord server is now active. I'll leave a link in the description box if you're interested in joining. I don't know what I'm doing really, so please forgive me if I haven't set it up in an optimal manner. Unlike the guy in this video, I'm not claiming that my Discord server was created and run by a perfect being, so please bear with me as we figure it out together. I don't know how much time I'll be able to dedicate to being there, so until I find some mods, I'm kind of banking on your good behavior. But if you do want to ask me a question directly, there is a section there where you can do just that. I'll try my best to keep up with that thread. As I mentioned in my last video, I'm fairly active on Twitter as well. That's a good place to get a hold of me if you'd like. I also wanted to give a quick shout out to my patrons. You're all amazing. I knew that my last video, and ones like it in the future, would be demonetized by YouTube. I'm not blaming YouTube, I didn't even ask for a review because I can completely understand why a video that discusses sociopaths might be demonetized. It would have surprised me more if it hadn't been. But I think it's an important topic and my patrons make it easier for me to justify covering such topics now and in the future. So thank you. Let's get back into this video. Had there been no perfection in the first place, the atheist would have never been able to identify the imperfection. How can someone identify an imperfection in the design if there was no design to start with? Why would this be important? So if God hadn't designed cancer, I wouldn't have been able to recognize that my dad dying painfully from cancer was an imperfection. And why should I care about that? If there's an illness that I can't conceive of, I don't sit around worrying about it. If no one dies from lebra blah, 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 I don't think, wow, I never knew that the perfection of not dying from lebra blah, 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 blah was a thing. I just live my life not caring or knowing that this deadly disease existed or had a possibility of existing. And we can see where there are imperfections, because like the nerve I pointed out earlier, we can easily think of ways to improve that design and make it function better. We just don't always have the power to make it happen. As for their description itself, what they call imperfection is actually an imperfection in their ability to grasp the wisdom beyond all things. You don't have to know everything in order to recognize that there's an imperfection and think of ways that you could improve upon that imperfection. If I could wave a magic wand and cure cancer and ensure that no one ever dies from that insidious disease again, I'm willing to bet that no one would say that I would need to grasp the wisdom of all things in order to realize that this would make the world a little bit better. No one would say something like, cancer is part of the design and since we don't know everything, we should just let cancer run its course and never cure it. 
Well, there might be some people who claim that, but the majority of people wouldn't, and they'd be right. When the guy in this video gets sick, I'm willing to bet that he doesn't just throw up his hands and say it's God's design that he be sick. He goes to a doctor and asks them to give him something that makes him well again. He doesn't just accept the imperfection, he actively tries to circumvent or fix the problem. The believer never claims that the universe is perfect. No one said they do. What they're saying is, you're claiming that God is perfect, yet it clearly designed things that are not perfect and demonstrably so. Even as lowly human beings can think of ways to improve upon this design that you claimed was designed by a perfect God. Do you not see the problem with your claim, or why an atheist might doubt your assertion? And without calamities, he only claims that the essence of perfection is that nothing happens without a purpose. Atheists are like someone denying the mastery of a spaceship just because it has a big amount of fuel that could explode any time. What? <laughs> I would hope no atheist would claim that spaceships were made by a perfect human. We can clearly improve on spaceship technology and we have. If they had been designed and built by a perfect human, the spaceship would be built in an optimal manner. You wouldn't expect to see such a ship designed with a subpar parachute system, for example. You'd expect the ship to be designed with the best possible parachute system conceivable. That is, if there isn't some way to achieve the same goal with a better method than a parachute. The very fact that spaceships aren't perfect points towards them being created by less than perfect beings. Just like the universe that is less than perfect would point towards an imperfect designer or no designer at all. Personally, I'm going with option B. The universe was never designed to be perpetual, and we were never designed to be gods. Right, you weren't designed at all. As a matter of fact, we were designed to be tested with both good and evil. Allah says what means, we test you with both good and evil circumstances as a trial. To us, you shall return. Why would you need to be tested by an entity that already knows all of the outcomes? If I somehow developed omniscient powers and knew that if I placed a dollar bill on a table to test Rick, that Rick would steal that dollar bill, why would I need to carry out the test? Carrying out the test would only be needed if I doubted the outcome or didn't know what the outcome would be. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Take care and cheers.